everyone. So today I'm going to be showing you how I made this really simple rectangle skirt with a tie back. Um, the reason that I like a tie back instead of traditional hooks and eyes or a zipper is because um, my personally my weight fluctuates a little bit so sometimes my waistline is closer to 32 inches and then the next day it might be 28 inches so it kind of fluctuates in this way I have a skirt that I can use uh, at a lot of different weights and it's gonna be adjustable if I get skinnier or if I gain weight so I really like this skirt it's super simple to make one of the easiest kinds of skirts you can make um, so I especially like this one because it has a lot of twirl factor in it and I know I'm going to be wearing this out dancing, which is awesome. And then even better, it has a broccoli pattern, which I'm not sure if you can tell from there, but I like the idea of it being, you know, when you're far away, you're like, oh, it's kind of a nice green pattern. And then when you get up close, you realize, oh wait, it's broccoli. So I think it's absolutely amazing. I think it's beautifully tacky. Um, and if you want to see how I made this, uh, keep on watching. All right, so this is the cut of fabric that I'm working with. It is roughly two yards long. It shrunk a little bit in the wash. So I did go ahead and wash this fabric since I do plan to wear this skirt pretty often. So I do want to be able to wash it, which is why I went ahead and I pre-washed the fabric. All right, so the skirt is going to wind up being a little bit shorter than I anticipated, which I am okay with. Um, it's shorter than what I would normally wear, but since I want this to be more of a casual skirt than a formal one, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at this. Um, so we will see how it looks. So the first thing that I'm going to do is this is, or it was 44 inch fabric, which means this is folded in half. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut along the fold up here so that I wind up with a total of four yards of fabric instead of two yards. So before I get to cutting the fabric, I'm actually going to cut the waistband while I still have the fold. Now I... Uh, normally I'd be okay with just cutting one strip for the waistband because my waist is currently 29 inches and this is, it was supposed to be 44, it's down to 40 inch fabric, um, so that would be a lot of room, but I want to have a tie back for this, so I'm going to double the length of the waistband so that I can make sure that happens. So I would like a 2 inch waistband, which means I'm going to cut two 5 inch wide strips, um, and the reason for that is so when I, f I want a half inch of seam allowance on either side and that way when I fold it over I'm gonna have two inches so I have the two inches and then I double that to get four inches for the fold and then I want half inch on each side for a seam allowance so that's the, where the extra inch comes from so I'm going to cut two five inch long strips from this end and then I'm going to cut through the fold and I will check back in when that's all right so here I have my two five inch strips cut out so what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to open it up and I'm going to make a very quick stitch right sides together along one edge of it. I'm going to leave the other edge free. And because of the way that I cut this fabric, uh, this edge of material is the selvage end, which means it's already finished, so I don't have to worry about this fraying. So I'm only gonna sew once right sides together, and then I'm gonna press it open. And for the rest of the fabric, I have that cut out. So I have two matching halves with two, I'm gonna have to trim that real quick, but with two yards each. So I'm going to sew that together with four yards. So this is the wrong side, this is the right side. It's a little bit hard to tell on this camera, but just take my word for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called a French seam on these sides of the fabric. I'm going to join these short ends together all the way, except on one side, I'm going to leave probably about five inches of it open and that's where the back is going to be where I'm going to eventually attach the waistband and have the tie. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that when I get to it. There's my roommate's cat walking by. So that's where the opening is going to be. Now because I'm doing it this way it means that there will be a seam visible in the front of the garment. I'm not worried about it because I'm using so much fabric it's going to wind up pretty much hidden in the seam or in the folds of the fabric itself. Also because of the way this pattern is it's really kind of jumbled and almost random so I'm not too concerned about it showing but if you have issues with that then what you could do is sew all the way up both of the loose edges and then uh, just cut a strip in the or cut about five inches down in the back So I am going to go ahead and do the French seam and if you don't know what that means It means I'm going to first sew directly like this just like it is with wrong sides together And then I'm going to flip it inside out and press the seam real quick And then I'm going to sew it right sides together so that it creates the nice seam And the reason that I'm doing this is because with one wash you can see this fabric frayed pretty poorly So I'm anticipating if I ever wanted to wash this this skirt again, it would fray even more. So that way I'm going to be hiding all the rough edges. So hopefully it won't fray next time that I wash it. So that way I can do it in the machine and I don't have to do it by hand, which is nice because I'm lazy. So I'm going to quickly sew this. Um, I'm gonna try 
to show or demonstrate the French seam real quick as best as I can. And then once that's done, I will report back. Okay, so let me show you real quick what I mean by a French seam if you don't know what that means. So as you can see, I have sewn with the right sides out, wrong sides together, uh, which is backwards than how you would normally sew any article of clothing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip the entire tube inside out. So now the right sides are together. And you see now how I have this really clean seam on the inside of the garment, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to fold it on the seam. When I have both hands, I'm gonna do it prettier, but I'm going to fold and then I'm going to sew along here. Now the thing about this is to make sure that it's really done right, you wanna make sure you have a smaller seam allowance on this first stitch and a larger seam allowance on the second one. So I sewed with a 3 8 inch, well, somewhere between a 3 8 and a 2 8 inch seam allowance on this side. So I'm going to sew half inch, um, probably a little bit more than a half inch on this side. And that way, when this gets sewn together, there will be no unfinished edges on either side. That way it's gonna be really hard for it to fray, so hopefully it's gonna stop it from fraying if I wash it again, and also it makes for a more professional looking garment. So also, once I have that sewn, I'm going to go ahead and fold the seam to one side and I'm going to stitch it down so it'll lay flat. That part is optional but I like to go ahead and do that because I don't like adding a whole lot of bulk to the inside. I like everything to be nice and flat. So I'm going to do that and uh, report back. All right so it's a little hard to see which is actually good for what I'm trying to do but I went ahead and I have my finished French seam that I went ahead and I stitched down. I stitched it flat. It adds a lot of bulk um, but I like how it makes everything lie nice and flat. So originally, move my camera strap, originally I was using a zigzag stitch so that I could sew close to the end but also make sure that I caught the fabric a little bit further up, but that wound up being a lot more visible than I wanted, so I just went ahead and switched to a straight stitch. So I just hope that the material on the inside doesn't bunch up or anything when I eventually wash it and with more wear and tear but we shall see, and if it does, I'm not too concerned about it. So I also have some visible top stitching, which you can see here on the stems of the broccoli, which I, again, am not too concerned about because there's gonna be so much fabric in this skirt and it's gonna be moving a lot and I don't think anyone's going to be looking that close to it. And also, you can totally skip this step. You also don't have to do the French seam at all. So I would recommend it, but you totally don't have to do that. Um, I know I didn't in my blue Cinderella skirt that I made a couple of weeks ago. So it's just a little extra touch that you can do, but you definitely don't have to. Okay, so this is what I came up with for the opening. So I didn't measure it, but it's probably about five inches worth of opening. So what I did was I rolled, I don't think that's in focus, but that's a limitation of my camera. So I ro folded the edge over and then I finger pressed it. So I just kind of pressed it down and the heat of my fingers made a little um, press in it so that I could take the pin out and fold it over one more time. So I basically double folded it to hide the raw edge. And then I did go ahead and do that all the way down. And then I went ahead and used a zigzag stitch on this. It is very visible, but since this is Sorry, but since this is going to be further up into the folds of the fabric, um, I'm even less concerned about, I, I, I am less concerned with this being visible than I would be if there was zigzag stitching down here where it's gonna be a lot more visible when it's finally worn. Also, uh, this is where there is going to potentially be a lot of pulling and depending on how I want to do up the closure, um, there could be potential for a lot of stress at a point here. So I just wanted to make sure that everything was nice and sturdy and well enforced. Um, so, uh, I think it would have been a lot easier if I rolled this and did this before I sewed up the seam, uh, but you live and you learn, and I will keep that in mind for, um, a later project, which I don't know if I'm going to include in this video or make it a separate one, um, but I will be keeping that in mind. So, the next thing I'm gonna do, I actually normally wouldn't recommend. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hem the skirt. So normally hemming would be the absolute last thing that you do so that you know how it's going to fit on your body. But since this is four yards worth of fabric and I am way too lazy to do that by hand, I wanna do it by machine. And since this is going to get gathered down from four yards to about 29 inches, um, it's going to create a really dense gather up top, which means it's going to be a little bit more difficult to hem this by machine later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this under to cover up these little um, lovely copyright 
notices on the bottom of this fabric. So I am going to hem the selvage. So since this material shrunk two inches from what I thought it was going to be, I want to hem the selvage and I want to use the selvage as the bottom. So that way I only have to turn it under once and that way I don't lose a lot of length because if I only turn it under once, I lose probably about a half inch worth of length where if I had to double it over, I would lose probably a little over an inch worth of length. And I don't want to take that much off, especially because I'm going to lose probably another half inch to an inch at the top. So I don't want to take off too much length. So I know I was just talking about having nice finished edges and looking all professional, so I'm uh, not going to do a full rolled hem on the bottom. I'm just going to fold it over once. And since this is the selvage edge, I'm not going to worry about it fraying because it's not going to fray. The only thing that I need to concern myself with is covering this white bit up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and pin it and then sew. And then after that, I'm going to gather. Um, so I'm going to hem and then I'll work on the waistband a little bit and I will tell you what I do when I get there. All right, so now I'm moving on to my waistband. I have my skirt over there cooling. I gave the hem a nice press. I wound up using about a half inch seam allowance on the hem. So now I am back to the waistband. Now I wanna spend a couple minutes talking about other things you could do to the waistband that I'm not going to. For instance, if you wanted a very structurally sound waistband, which I would recommend if you were using heavier fabrics or if you really want the waistband to be a very specific uh, shape and you always wanted it to keep its shape very nicely, I would recommend using some fusible interfacing and I would go ahead and fuse that on before you make this seam. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this into a pseudo bias tape. Now you could just use bias tape for the waistline if you wanted to, or if you wanted to get super fancy, you could do the proper way of cutting the bias tape, which is cutting on the diagonal and then stitching it together, but that's more work than I really wanted to invest in this piece and since it's going to have a tie back instead of a formal closure i'm not going to worry about the fit and making sure that there's stretch here because i'm going to be able to adjust the fit uh, every time i put it on based on the tie so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to make my pseudo bias tape i'm going to fold each edge upward about half an inch i have a measuring tape there i'm going to measure that out properly when i actually do it i'm going to fold each end inward and I'm going to press with my iron and make a nice press so that it will stay that way so that when I sew I'll have a nice guideline of where I want to sew and also I know that the edges are going to stay inside so when I eventually sew and fold it over I will have nice clean finished edges visible so I am going to do that also I'm going to take this opportunity so before I press the top and the bottom I'm actually going to press these pieces inside. So this is the selvage edge, so I don't have to worry about it fraying, but I don't want the raw edge to be showing. So I am going to press this inside before I fold the top and the bottom in. So that way when I eventually reach the end and I don't have the skirt attached anymore, I can fold it over and I'll have a nice clean finish to the tie that I'm making. All right, so I have my waistband all fully pressed. Um, I do want to show you the corners real quick. So this fabric takes heat beautifully. I love it. So I had a very easy time pressing it and folding it and getting to stay. Now I did go ahead and it's hard to tell there. I went ahead and I folded the corners under so that way um, I wouldn't have that little tiny piece of raw edge sticking out when I eventually folded it over and sewed it. That's just a tiny little detail that no one would probably notice, but I want to go ahead and give that a try because I haven't successfully done it before and I want to see if it works, which I think it should, but we shall see. So now I'm going to hopefully explain a little bit the way that I do my gathering. So traditionally, or the way that I see a lot of other people gather fabric down or you know, when I see uh, fabric or skirt instructions do it, they have everyone just kind of gather the entire thing or the entire length of the skirt down at once to the thread length that you want. Um, and then you kind of spread it out. The way that I do it is a little bit different. I think it's a lot easier to do it this way. I think it's a lot easier to get a good even uh, gather when you do it this way. So what I'm going to do, I have my center seam marked, so I don't need to mark that. Now my waist is normally 29 inches, but I'm going to round it up to 30 just for ease of movement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my measuring tape. I'm going to measure 15 inches from either side. I'm doing this one-handed, so it's a little awkward. But I'm going to measure 15 inches from either side of the center, and I'm going to take a pin and mark it. And that's going to be 
the end point. So I'm going to do this on the other side now and hopefully not burn myself on an iron again. So this is the center fold. I'm gonna line up the one inch or the start of the tape here and I'm going to measure out 15 inches. So right here, I'm going to put another pin. There we go, okay. So from here to here, sorry, over here, that's my full waistline. That's a full 30 inches. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to go back from the center line and now I'm going to measure seven and a half inches from the center to either side. So here's my seven and a half and stick a pin there to mark it. So I am essentially dividing this into quarters. So that way I'm going to gather the skirt, but I'm only going to gather the skirt a quarter at a time. And that's gonna make managing it so much easier. It's gonna make it so much easier to gather it down and make sure the gathers are even. It's gonna make it a lot easier to maneuver later. So um, I'm going to hopefully get my tripod set up so that you can see what I'm going to do next so that I can show you what I'm doing a little bit better because I need both hands for that. All right, so hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So I went ahead and remarked this. I measured the quarter mark of the skirt. Um, that's just a matter of folding. I thought it was really simple, so I didn't think I, need to show, I needed to show that. So what I'm going to do, because that's on the top. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start pinning the skirt to the waistband. So I want, the way that this is gonna work if you're not familiar with bias tape is I want to make sure that the right side is up when I sew this because if the right side's up when I sew through the bias tape the first time, then I'm gonna have one line of stitching underneath here on this line and then when I sew it over, I'm going to have another line of stitching here. So this way I'm going to wind up with two lines of stitching on the underside and only one line on the top. So it's going to look a little neater, it's gonna look more professional, and that way you can make sure that this is all nice and even and nice and properly placed so you don't have to worry about it underneath too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to quickly check for this. And it keeping the fold, it's keeping the fold really well. So I'm actually going to unfold this layer and remeasure because I'm dumb and I forgot that pin was actually having a purpose. So I'm going to remeasure this out real quick for seven and a half inches. I'm going to unfold, move this pin to the other side, stick this pin through one layer of fabric exactly where it is. I'm just moving it to one layer of fabric instead of both. And I'm going to unfold this layer of fabric. Now it has a really nice pleat in it, so I'm not going to be too concerned about um, it falling apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the edge. So remember that you want right side up, so you want to match the wrong side, can you even see that? Yeah, you wanna match the wrong side of the skirt to the right side of the bias tape. So I'm going to just quickly pin this here. So this is the end. And I'm gonna pin that. Next, I'm going to find the first quarter mark and pin that to this quarter mark. I'm just gonna move this pin over. Then I'm going to find, in my case, the center seam. If you're working with, um, or if you're not, if you stitched up these side seams instead of the front and the back seam, then you'd be working with the side seam at the quarter mark and then the front and the back marks at the front and the back. So I'm going to pin the front seam here. Now, if you did what I did with the French seam, it's not gonna matter too much because it's only just a tiny bit of fabric in the grand scheme of things. But if you wanna be really nitpicky about it, you're going to want to make sure that the actual seam of the fabric and not the line of stitching from when you stitch it down, that's what you wanna match up. So again, it's really not that big of a deal with the how much fabric is actually gonna be gathered down. But in case you want to be a little more nitpicky about it, that's what you do. And since this is a giant tube and everything's connected, it's gonna to start to, uh, 
bunch up a little bit. So next I'm going to mark this final quarter mark. Take out this pin. And I'm going to pin that together. And then I'm going to find the other end of the skirt, which is going to be somewhere back there, and pin it here. So what this does is instead of gathering uh, four yards of fabric down to 30 inches, this allows you to gather one yard of fabric down to, I can't math, um, probably about six, seven inches. So it makes it a lot easier. In this way, you can gather in pieces. So if you wanted to only gather this one section real quick and work with this, you can, and then you're only gathering and pinning and making sure just this one section is matched together instead of worrying about everything matched together. So I'm going to go back to this side and I'm going to show you how I gather it. I might speed through this, but we'll see. Also this way, uh, because you're working with smaller sections in case something happens and your needle breaks, you only have to go back and do the one section instead of redoing everything. So this is just a tiny needle. Ideally, you would use a much bigger needle for gathering, but this is just what I have. There we go. A tiny, small little needle, and I have this green thread. So what I'm going to do is drop the thread. What I'm going to do is pull out a little measure of thread um, is probably about 24 inches. It doesn't have to be anything major. And what I like about this technique of gathering is you don't have to do the whole thing in one section. So you can do lots of smaller sections. So I'm going to thread this needle, which happened off camera, my bad. And I'm actually going to pull through a double length of thread. So what was 24 inches is now 12 inches of double thread. You can kind of see that on the red at the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to tie this off really quickly. Nothing fancy, just a simple couple of knots. I know there's a better way to do this and quicker and you can like wrap it around your finger and then slide it, but I never really like that that much and I feel much better when I know that the knot is there and I really don't mind taking the extra 30 seconds to do it. All right, so this is what I have. I have my knot, roughly 12 inches of thread on my needle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up this end and I'm going to make a really small, you're not gonna be able to see it because it's green thread on green fabric. I'm going to make a very small, simple cross stitch real quick, just to anchor the thread in place. Um, this is going through the layers that I created, so I have a lot of extra strength in this area. And once you have that stitch in place, you can go ahead and move this pin because it's all secured. Next, I'm going to bring the needle to the front of the fabric. It sounds weird to have to say it, but I have messed this up on more than one occasion. And I am going to eyeball it. If you wanted to make a mark on the fabric, you would do it before you pinned it and you could use a ruler or measuring tape and just make a mark all the way through, probably about half an inch down. So I'm just going to start gathering. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So the important thing is that you want to make sure this is done an equal, distance from the, an equal distance from the top all the way across. It doesn't really matter too much what distance that is. I want to make sure that this is under half an inch, again, because this fabric shrunk in the wash and I don't want it to be too incredibly short, so I don't want to take too much length out. But as long as this is an equal distance, it really doesn't matter. So I'm probably going to speed through this until I get to the end. All right, so I have 
This section gathered down, I have probably about an extra eight inches worth of thread. And this is where it's easier to do this in smaller sections as opposed to one big section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have, I'm going to stretch out this back shorter piece of fabric. Um, it stretches a little more than I would actually want it to, but I'm just gonna stretch it out, make sure it's straight, make sure there's no real folds in it. And once that is done, I'm going to take the leftover thread and I'm going to make another anchoring cross stitch in it. Uh, now I am going to go ahead and tie this off because I don't have enough thread on my needle to do another section. So I am going to tie this off real quick. Now that I'm doing it on camera, I can't quite get it. Everyone has their own way of tying off thread. This is just the way that I have done it for years and I like it this way. I tie a couple of knots, usually two or three. This particular stitch doesn't have to be incredibly strong. It just has to hold while you pin it in place and while you sew. Um, so yeah, this pin fell right out. That's okay. I have everything already pinned together. Where are my scissors? I had scissors. There are my scissors. So I'm just gonna snip this needle real quick. Put this off to the side. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that everything is arranged the way I want it, which it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this flat. All right, and now I'm going to start spreading out the gathers evenly. So I'm gonna start spreading them out. So again, it's much easier to do this on a smaller scale than to do the entire waistband at once. And since you're gathering each section individually and you have the same amount of fabric going into each section, when you gather it down and you spread it out or, or you push it together, that means that everything's going to be pretty uniform throughout the entire skirt. So now what I'm going to do, now that I have it arranged, it's kind of hard for you to see. Sorry about that. Ooh, wow, that's really hard for you to see. Okay, so now that I have all of the gathers arranged pretty evenly throughout this section, I'm going to start pinning it. So I'm just going to start from the center of this section and I'm just gonna eyeball it. It doesn't have to be precise and I'm just gonna pin it in place. And then I'm gonna go from the edge to the center of that section and from the quarter mark to the center of this section. And I'm just going to keep adding pins until I think it's secure enough to move. So this is gonna depend on your fabric. This is gonna depend on how you feel about the situation of how many pins you're actually gonna to wanna to use. I use about this many per section. So now that I have this one section gathered down, it's gathered even with the top of the stitching so that when I take it to my machine, I can just do a half inch seam allowance all the way down. I'm gonna add one more pin here. I can just sew a half inch seam allowance all the way down and hopefully it will match up with the fold or it'll be just above the fold. So that way when I flip this over and fold it and I stitch this down, I will only have one layer of stitching visible on the top. So I'm going to gather all of my sections down like that and then I'm gonna go ahead and stitch and probably go ahead and fold this over and stitch before I check back in again. All right, so here I have the waistband fully installed. Um, it looks a little wrinkled because I actually just put it on and filmed my intro and outro. Um, so what I did was I went ahead and sewed the skirt to the like the right side of the bias tape. So I sewed that and then I went ahead and I folded this top layer over and then I made a really small line of stitching going that way. So this way I only have one layer of top stitching on the outside and there's a couple of messy layers on the inside that we don't entirely need to look at. Um, so yeah, I am really happy with how this turned out. So um, I went ahead and I just sewed one layer through, or I sewed one line of stitching to do the waistband. So I didn't think I needed to do two layers and there really wasn't anything to sew t through twice. So I just folded it over and I made sure that I used a small enough seam allowance there so that when this gets pressed open. If it accidentally does, then no raw edges are showing. So I went ahead and I did that. And you can see here, maybe, sort of, uh, but you can see here where I folded over those corners to make sure that there weren't any raw edges showing up here so it won't fray over there. So I think I'm going to go ahead and call this done. We're gonna look at the hem real quick because it's nice and finished with the salvage. Um, 
So I'm gonna go ahead and call this done. The only thing I would have done differently is I think I would have done these seams on the side instead of in the front and the back um, because they are, or the one in the front is kind of visible and it does make the skirt not quite spin the way I want it to, but I'm not too concerned about it. I think people are going to be more distracted by the fact that it's broccoli than I have a uh, very stiff part in the front. So yeah, next time I would do this, I would definitely put these on the side, um, especially if I'm working with a fabric as thick as this one. One last thing I totally forgot to mention. So when you close up the waistband at the top and you have this little extra bit of fabric that you leave unsewn so that it's easier to get in and out of, uh, sometimes you wind up with a gap here. Uh, so there are a couple ways you could go about fixing that. You could either put in some hooks and eyes, you could put in some snaps, you could put in some Velcro. If you wanted to go ahead and install a zipper there, you definitely could. Um, what I'm going to do because I'm lazy is I'm probably just going to safety pin it every time I wear it. So every time I wear these kinds of skirts, I always have something underneath because I'm going out dancing. So for my long blue one, I always have my petticoat on. And for this one, I'm definitely gonna have shorts on underneath. So I'm not too concerned about this potentially gaping open but you know if you wanted to do something to make sure that stays closed you definitely could i'm probably just going to put one or two safety pins in it next time i wear it so now i'm going to call that done lils come here come here you want to come say hi please you want to come say hi okay lils wanted to make an appearance actually she didn't she's not happy with me for taking her but she's gonna help me say bye. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>